Hey everyone, I recorded a video late last night and woke up early to finish it off by doing the introduction to the video. And these are the CCIE collaboration exam topics as you can see in the URL back here. Um, if we take a look at section 7.9, you can see that this is called recording. I am only going to be covering the built-in bridge um, aspect. However, I will be providing resources for um, Cube, where I believe they talk about SIPREC. Um, I know that they talk about the Cube uh, forking and all that great stuff. I'll also provide another resource for the CMS based call recording. And then a third resource that I believe is going to cover um, some of the network-based call recording, but I'm not too sure because I've really only looked at the Cube one and it is great. There's a lot of people out there looking for Cube stuff. They want to know Cube configuration, Cube design, Cube commands, Cube troubleshooting. And the resources that I'm talking about are from the Cisco Live on-demand library. So I believe anybody can get access to this. I'm not too sure. Please comment down below if you are sure. But I believe you just have to sign up um, to get access to these resources. I know this year it's free for everybody. Uh, Cisco Live was. So everybody should have access to these things. This one here is uh, it's called the BRK lets us know it's a breakout. COL lets us know it's collab. And then the 2000 level is going to let us know that it's an intermediate level uh, session. If I remember correctly, I think 2000 is intermediate, 1000 is like beginner, and then 3000 is advanced, if I remember right. So for this video, they start talking about PSTN call recording, external and PSTN call recording using Cube. They talk about that at the one hour, 27 minute mark uh, and it's at 22 seconds within that 27 minute mark. The other session that I'll be providing a link to is uh, Breakout Collab 2016. This was in Barcelona 2019, and this deals with CMS enterprise recording. Uh, for, for all of these, when I give you the link, it'll go to this page. And over here, you can get the presentation in a, pre in a PDF format, and then there'll be the session video as well. And lastly is the one about deploying and troubleshooting call recording infrastructure. I know that this one talks about Cube Media Proxy, right? Which I think, if we go back to the CCIE exam topic, yep. And so, you know, I'll be talking about the built-in bridge stuff, but there will be these other resources that people can go to. Plus, I'll probably even... Uh, get some of the cube documentation, official documentation, just in case there's anybody out there that wants to read the specific sections about call recording. In this first video, we'll only be talking about installation of MediaSense, building out the VM and uh, getting it installed, going through the setup wizard. And then I'll do a subsequent video where we actually go through the configuration and call tests. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. Hello and thank you for coming to check out this video. Uh, the next thing I'm going to be setting up in my CCMP and CCIE collaboration lab series is call recording. And the recording solution that I'm going to be using is an older Cisco product that we don't really have anymore. But uh, it's not too old, you know, 2018, we have an OVA here. I've already downloaded the OVA. I've already downloaded the ISO files and uploaded those ISO files to the UCS server as well so i went over here and i said to um, deploy a virtual machine using an ovf or ova and uh, i selected my one storage drive that i have the eth zero is going to be on my server vlan hq and i'm going to make it a primary and secondary node with two cp two cpu and by that, it's, it's not going to be a primary and secondary node. 
This just means that you're either building out your primary or your secondary. There's there's something something called an expansion node, which I will not be going into. I'm going to do thin provisioning as well, which somebody asked me in a, in a video a while back, why are you doing thin provisioning? It's because I'm in a lab. I don't have to really worry about oversubscribing and uh, you know, in a, in a production environment, I'd probably want to be using thick provisioning. So that way I never find myself in a scenario where my, my different servers are fighting for disk space. I uncheck the box to do power on automatically because I still have to point this virtual machine towards the ISO file. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. One thing I want to mention is that this virtual machine, this, this software is, th there's something pretty unique about it compared to other software that we've done so far. You can see that there are three different disks and the first one, this, this is based off the OVA as well, because I'm deploying this VM from the OVA. The first, the first disk is one 80 gig drive. Second disk is again an 80 gig drive and the last one is 210 but that's for the um, specific type of deployment that i chose right you could have you could have chosen that expansion uh server or the other options but for the option that i chose this is what we're going to get i'll go ahead and click finish something that i also want to note is that I've already um, configured this server in my DNS and I gave it, I'm going to give it a host name of record. So if we check out record.pcanane.com doing NS lookup, you can see that I'm going to give it an IP address that's on the HQ server subnet and it's going to end in dot 30. Let's go back to our newly created virtual machine. I named it MediaSense. That's the name of the virtual machine, not the actual name of the server. We'll go under edit and we want to point this to an ISO file. I need to make sure that I select the, um, the bootable file and I'm doing 1151. So I selected that, we'll click save, and let's power this thing on and see if, if everything goes as planned. The virtual machine is now powered on, and as you can see that it did actually find the media. I'm going to skip the, the uh, check though, because I feel like that's just something that takes time. I expect that the ISO file is going to be good. And once this actually boots up, even though the specs are different, on MediaSense compared to CUCM or, or um, you know, Unity connection, and it's different in the sense that it has three different disks. The installation wizard is essentially the same thing. So if you've installed CUCM before, you know how to install MediaSense. We'll say yes, I'm going to install that version. Proceed here, continue. Dump this thing down into the New York time zone. All right, remember the host name that I chose is record. The IP address is gonna be 192.168.110.30. And that is a slash 24. 192.168.110.30. I do want to enable DNS, 192.168.110.18. The domain is pcanane.com. I'm going to do the easy username and password again, as always. This is the first node in the cluster, and now it wants my uh, IP address for uh, NTP. And I can essentially use any IP address that's on my switch. So I'll be using 
110.1. Since I'm in a lab environment, I use the same password for all of these different uh, sessions. And when they ask me for an admin name, I pretty much always use admin as well. All right, so now it says that it's complete. I'm going to let this run. I'm not really too sure how long it takes to run right now to 11.08 PM. So um, once this is done installing, I will also mention how long that took. But usually whenever I install a unified communication server, I check back every 20 to 30 minutes in case there's an issue with the install. I don't want to waste two or three hours thinking that the install is progressing just to come back and find out that the install is hung up due to some sort of a failure, either a failure to contact the DNS server or the NTP server or the default gateway, or even just a failure with the software trying to do the installation. Anyway, with that said, I'll pause the recording here and uh, we'll kick it back up once the installation is successful. The installation is now complete. I was able to log into the CLI here and I can also hit the web page. With that said, it only took about 45 minutes or so for the installation to complete. And I'll end the video here. In the next one, we'll actually go through configuring call recording and then also how to check the recordings on the MediaSense side. I hope there was something of value in this video and I'll see you in the next one.